All right. Welcome to the November Parks, Recreation, Open Space Commission uh, general meeting. Uh, we're a week earlier than we usually would be because of the uh, holiday next um, Thursday. Uh, can we start with um, a call to order roll call? Certainly. Uh, Commissioner Abbott? Here. Commissioner Armendariz? Here. Commissioner Beal? I'm sorry, did he, Commissioner Beal, you? Present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Chang Frank? Here. Commissioner Kent? Here. Commissioner Price? Here. Chair Martin? Here. Okay, next on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Um, yeah. We have two minutes to approve. Do we want to do them this, at the same time or separately, or does it matter? Oh, um, we should probably, let's, uh, um, I think we should I, probably do them separately. Yes, separate motions, please. Okay, yeah. so I'll move that we approve the minutes from the September 29th uh, meeting. I'll second. Roll call. Commissioner Abbott? Yes. Commissioner Armendariz? Yes. Commissioner Beal? Yes. Commissioner Chang Frank? Yes. Commissioner Kent? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Chair Martin? And I was recused. <laughs> okay, and then uh, for the our, our regular meeting uh, mid-October, do we have a, a motion to approve the minutes? I move, we approve. And I'll second, that's Todd here. Okay, well, roll call. Commissioner Abbott? Yes. Commissioner Armendariz? Yes. Commissioner Beal? Yes. Commissioner Chang Frank? Yes. Commissioner Kent? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Chair Martin? Yes. Okay, uh, next up is um, public comment. And let's see. Uh, this is for um, persons desiring to address the advisory body to us on an item that is not on the agenda. Please note that each speaker is limited to three minutes. The Brown Act limits the commission's ability to take and or discuss items that are not on the agenda. Therefore, such items are normally referred to staff for comment or to a future agenda. Please raise your hand if you would like to speak <clears throat> now to something that is not on the agenda. Okay, looks like we have one hand raised. Staff, if you could let them in. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Great. Uh, thanks for this opportunity, and I'm not sure this is if this is something that's on the agenda already because I sent an email about this, but um, I just want to thank you all for considering uh, setting up a small dog area around Memorial Park. I know I sent an email about this and not realize that this is already part of the uh, the plans that are being, which is very comprehensive, it turns out, so that's uh, my fault, but um, I have a small dog. I'm sure she'd love to run around there, meet other small dogs, so just uh, want to say thank you for that consideration. That's all. Okay, thank you. All right, um, can staff refresh our memory as to uh, whether the Prop 68 funds, the, the, I know some of them were we were recommending be used at the dog park were were any of those for a small dog facility? Uh, yes. <clears throat> All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, seeing no other hands, um, uh, next up is item number four, announcements. And um, uh, staff, would you start? Sure. So I uh, wanted to uh, remind the commission that um, after city council approval on October 4th, uh, individual property owners can apply now to have a street tree planted by the city in the public uh, right of way adjacent to their property for free. 
So if you're interested, um, you can visit the urban forestry uh, page on our city website for more information. And how much did that used to cost? Oh. Oh, okay. If you, have, if you, don't, if you don't know, that's okay. I, I, I don't want to venture into it because I don't, I don't have it on, from the, on the top of my head. <laughs> yes. um, we, uh, as a courtesy also during the rainy season, uh, Sand for Sandbags is available at Ocean View Park uh, for community members to access for free. Uh, additionally, free mulch is often available at the same location. Uh, with proof of Albany uh, residency, up to 10 sandbags to fill with sand can be obtained at the City of Albany Fire Department. And if you need assistance filling your sandbag, uh, you can contact the neighbor Neighborhood Services um, at 510-524-9122, and uh, we will assist you in getting uh, pre-filled bags. Um, also, uh, Ocean View Park and Memorial Park Fields and the Dog Park will be closed for maintenance, receding, and aeration starting on Monday. This annual closure helps to keep the fields maintained and in good condition. Fields reopen in mid-January, depending on the weather. There was also a uh, sanit sanitary sewer overflow that occurred on the night of Wednesday, October 25th. Uh, on a sewer line that parallels Cerrito Creek between San Pablo Avenue and Evelyn Avenue. The point of overflow was in front of 405 Canes and sewage from the overflow entered the uh, adjacent Cerrito Creek. Public Works and fire responded the following morning to clear the blockage in the line and implemented the city spill response plan. So per the city's response plan, public works staff cleaned the roadway and accessible creek banks, posted signs and notified the appropriate authorities, including um, Cal OES, as well as stakeholders such as Friends of Five Creeks. So that's all I have uh, for announcements. Um, okay, and uh, let's see. I know uh, Brian Beal had uh, conveyed a request for um, a moment of silence for our um, for an Al Alameda County Board of Supervisor uh, who was struck and killed by a car yesterday. Um, Brian, would you like to introduce that? Yeah. So um, the tragic news of uh, of Wilma Chan, who is uh, the the leader of the Alameda County Supervisor and also a leader in um, the Asian American community. Um, someone who's done a lot for Alameda County. She was, um, I guess, had this um, poverty-free Alameda County program, and she was personally the one who signed uh, my certificate for completion of the Alameda County um, Citizens Academy. So, yeah, so at the end, I, I wanted to just maybe take a moment. Um, and and it's, it, you know, it's going to be a difficult pair of shoes to fill. Okay. All right. Any other announcements from commissioners? All right. Seeing none. Uh, next item on the agenda uh, is uh, presentations, of which we have none. And then item six is discussion and possible action on matters related to the following items. Parks item six one parks recreation open space master plan groundworks office will present the final of the parks recreation open space master uh, draft plan and the recommendation from staff is to provide input on the final draft of the parks recreation open space master plan um isabel when does this go to the city council uh, at, at an upcoming meeting uh most probably the first one in december and should uh commi parks commissioners be present or that's optional oh it's optional but it's up to you if you'd like to um be there you're more than welcome yes mm -hmm. all right so if groundworks uh staff could be brought on board if they're not already and take it away i guess brennan's having technical difficulties um i could swap in for now um, just give me one moment sorry for the technical difficulties okay okay great um, 
Okay, sharing my screen. There we go. Uh, we are having some fun issues. I'm not sure why, but we'll go with it regardless. Uh, so thank you, commissioners, for joining us tonight. Um, we are here to just give you a final uh, review of our master plan draft. Um, we wanted to split up our time in two parts. Uh, we would like to just go over the master plan again, um, getting some more feedback from you folks. Uh, that will take roughly 30 minutes. And then we want to present two chapters we haven't been able to present, chapter one, Chenangles, and our appendix, placemaking catalog. Um, again, fun issues, I'm sorry, it doesn't uh, render correctly. But as you know, the document is organized into six chapters with a single appendix. Um, chapter one is vision and goals. This lays out our broad themes for the uh, master plan as well as you know, kind of bringing back the thematic elements that we've discovered during the process. Uh, in our second chapter, we're learning, um, just presenting our analysis, our uh, project discoveries. Chapter three, workshop. This was um, a summary of our community engagement process and a collection of all of those feedback. Chapter four, project catalog. It could also be a recommendation of projects, but it catalogs all of the list of projects that we think are appropriate for the parks and open space system. Chapter five, evaluating those projects and um, providing some feasibility as well as developing a forecast evaluation. Then our sixth chapter, implement, uh, you know, helps, you know, kind of um, develop some immediate and long-term steps towards implementing the projects that we've discovered. And then we're excited to show our appendix. Um, we are providing some placemaking guidance as well as our initial uh, memorial inventory. So just, just as a, a summary of uh, our last presentation on the master plan, that was October 14th, um, we have updated the master plan uh, in four ways. We've developed three principles for the pro system. We'll present that later tonight. We develop goals and objectives for each parks and open space. We then also taking notes from you commissioners as well as public comments uh, to clarify some of the project recommendations in our project catalog. And then finally, again, our appendix, um, this includes an amenities inventory as well as the memorials inventory and just key placemaking guidance that uh, addresses some of the thematic elements that we kept hearing throughout this process. Um, rather than going, doing a page turn, we think that it's more appropriate to just address any additional questions you commissioners may have. Um, I'm hoping that we can hold off on chapter one and appendix one um, for the later portion of this meeting, but if, uh, if, anyone has a, a particular uh, comment or question, we'd be happy to take that on right now. I'm gonna pause my share and open any uh, chapters that you commissioners may have. So this is your opportunity to address any concerns and I could um, flip to the appropriate chapters. David, I'm, I'm back, just FYI. Okay, great. Okay, so you're specifically looking for feedback on certain range of pages or certain sections or? Um, it's really up to you, commissioners. Um, we have, here, let me resume. In a, way to, in a way to maybe characterize it a little differently is that we were just, um, which I, I'm actually gonna pause if I don't, we, I think we issued now, you now the, in, the entire package which includes the five um, chapters that we um, discussed last week. And so we would just thought we would, in leafing through the 
200 pages that we've sent you. If you noticed anything in those five chapters that you just wanted to touch on, we can happily talk about those now. Um, otherwise, we have we can move on to these the, these two chapters, and mo most importantly is the vision and goal section, which we're going to talk about, about later. So we just thought we'd give some time here very quickly, and it, we may can just end it if it's no one really has any other comments. But just any other thing from those chapters uh, that you may have noticed um, in, in reviewing the entirety of the document. But hopefully, you spent more time on. Um, um, Chapter one. Okay, well, I have a few things, but I'll open it up to see who else. Uh, uh, start with Todd and Commissioner Kent. Okay, thank you. Uh, first off, I was very impressed. It's, it's a beautiful document. I think it, it, you guys folks did a great job. Um, I did notice one thing, and, and this is a learn chapter, it's page 24. Um, and and it's just a small thing, but there's a heading uh, the six goals of the Albany Parks and Recreation. That, that heading didn't make a lot of sense to me. It's just, uh, you know, it's really just a typo situation, I think. Um, okay, we will, we'll yeah. note that. Yeah, just just a little thing. And that's that's really, I think, of, of I, I, you know, spend, I just happen to see that I spend most of my time in the other section. So I think that's that. Okay. Um, Commissioner Kent? Um, yeah, I didn't say anything. I spent most of my time on the other document. But when I was going through this one, I, I think I, I want to circle back to the discussion over the sketch diagrams. And um, I think we all kind of agree that they, they have a purpose, but they have, to, they have to walk a delicate line of not committing, but also inspiring. And some of them work and some don't. And, and one in particular, I think the Memorial Park one, because it's partly kind of illustrative, and then all of a sudden it looks like a... Um, kind of a square diagram of, of, of more like a space allocation, then it's illustrative. You're not quite, it, it, if you read it wrong, it looks like you're knocking out the the um, memorial trellis and rearranging the whole children's play space, which is now kind of an interesting circular thing, but now it's represented as a square. So, I mean, it's a minor thing, but I, uh, but I want to, I was just kind of, I guess I'm pressing if you, um, if you, maybe some subtlety is, needs to be born into this because okay. It might exist on others too. Just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. Um, I I would second that. Well, I I uh, uh, did also like the way the the layout and the the pictures and the, it's very visual. It's very visual. It's very. Um, I I think it's uh, really great in a lot of ways. The whole document in that regard. Uh, the Memorial Park, um, in particular, I keep, whenever I look at it, I fixate on certain things. I'm like, whoa, what happened to that? And what happened to that? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit worried that, um, for example, I was on the dog park subcommittee and we looked really carefully at the dog park space and it's, it shows what a small dog park might look like. And, um, but it looks like it has removed the like a batting cage that's there and uh so which is something that some people might get really upset about um and uh so i hate to trigger people you know what i mean <laughs> so uh there is a nice disclaimer on that until I have to admit. Yes. Note. Yeah. I, I did notice that, and that is very important. Uh, so there has to be a balance there. And, um, but yes, the, the disclaimers are, are helpful and, um, and maybe they're sufficient. Um, other, other comments. I had, I had other comments yeah, as well, I, but open up. I can't see people. Oh, yeah. Um, it's commissioner Frank. I, I just want to make sure because I, it's, it's actually kind of expounding on the last two comments. Um, yeah, I think that there was a suggestion in our last meeting to take off the flex courts, um, just entirely. I actually have walked that space now with the map and everything in it. It really honestly doesn't even look feasible there. So it just doesn't even make sense 
our community very is very familiar with Memorial Park, and I think that'll really startle people. So I think now, like, it sounds like there's sort of at least a majority on this commission that would like that to be taken off. So I really hope that that can be done. Yes, um, that, is a, that is a mistake on our part. I sincerely apologize. There was plenty of discussion and feedback on that. We should have picked that up. My, my apologies. Okay. And, and thank you, though, for putting in the flex courts. I think one way to easily solve that is to take it off the map and then put whatever you had a flex court picture in the Pier Street Park or something or some other if you could just plunk that in that empty fourth space, you know, I think that would suffice, then it's known as an intention, but not a, you know, done deal with in terms of citing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Beal and Commissioner Abbott. Yeah, I guess um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and agree with um, basically everything everyone else said. Um, and, uh, but I wanted to just talk a little bit about the presentation itself. Um, and I'm actually really quite impressed with it. Now, I don't have as much experience with these type of diagrams as some of the other commissioners, um, but I just want to say I like the, uh, the use of colors, um, the way it seems like it's simple, that it flows. So I think, um, you know, this is a good document that, um, that the public can understand. And, you know, that's, that's, I think, what I, I really like about it. Some of the details of the plan, yeah. Um, flex courts are not something I'm completely convinced about. I guess if other people think they're a good idea, okay. Uh, I just somehow almost think we better just decide what we're going to use the space for and optimize it for that. Uh, in general, I'd like to see more pickleball courts where we can get them. Um, and that, they, that may become, you know, a little theme of the commission at some point is getting more pickleball in Albany. Um, so I, I think, you know, by and large, I'm supportive of, you know, any changes other people have talked about, but I, uh, I really like the presentation. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Abbott and Commissioner Price. Yeah, I apologize for missing this before. I, I had to go through my list. I have my page numbers. So I had to kind of map on to sections. So this is another one that's actually on this page. And this might be more of a question for staff about clarification. My understanding or my memory is that the lighting program we're talking about at Memorial Park isn't replacing the lighting that's there, but no pathway lighting um, as the budgeted item. And this diagram is clearly showing, I think, a, a replacing the lighting that is there. Is that correct or, is, or is, am I just misinterpreting? Uh, well, the, it's new pathway lighting for paths. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. And, yeah, and the other thing I remember we, we spoke about, and this, this is my understanding back when we initially submitted this uh, plan, you know, what, 10 years ago, I don't know when that was, but was um, uh, uh, lights at the base of the trees, just, just providing more light in the, in the park rather than new fixtures that were going to be, you know, pretty bright for the neighbors. So I just want to be sure we're, we're aware that that was the initial discussion. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Commissioner Price. Hi. Um, yeah, my thanks again. The document looks this will be great. Um, my comments are about um, the uh, pages 48 and 49, um, the kind of uh, larger themes and goals um, for the system in the project catalog, and then the system-wide um, improvements. And <clears throat> I was just, I went back, I was reading back through the um, comments and feedback that came out of the public outreach and um and then was looking at those community goals for the parks and open space on page um 48 i think that's i guess it's actually page 88 in the document i apologize um and um thank you and the community goals that state you know that the these main goals that came out were open space protection and park management and maintenance and um and then looking at the the system wide improvements that are suggested and kind of thinking that the I think particularly from sort of this maintenance point of view maintenance and management if that's really reflected in those system wide improvements that are being um, suggested there I feel like there's sort of this statement um, about and and it was obvious in the kind of community outreach that there was this focus on the need for 
um, maintenance um, focus, but I'm not sure that that's really reflected in the system-wide improvement goals. I guess I can respond to that. Yes, uh, there was a little bit of a mismatch. Uh, of course, the community has prioritized maintenance and management. However, the, the identified maintenance and management projects had, weren't really uh, intended system-wide. I think there's some turf and landscape maintenance that we have identified here. Um, but yes, the, yes, the community did prioritize maintenance management, yet the projects identified weren't necessarily prioritized for maintenance management, if that makes sense. Um, there are key like open space maintenance uh, ideas for the creeks. Um, but yeah, generally, I, I know it's, it's a little surprising where the community time and time again talk about maintenance management, but like the the project identified weren't weren't there, weren't talking about means management. I think it's fair, fair criticism and will, I, I don't think there's too much hurt in adding that here in the system-wide improvements, just a maintenance, something about maintenance as well. Um, so yeah, I think we'll look at that. That seems totally fine. Um, so I had a series of things. One was a general question as to um, how much input public works and city staff had on the document for coming up with, because um, I, I wouldn't expect the public and, you know, the surveys to necessarily come up with the things that, that actually need to happen on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis. Um, so can, could uh, the consultants describe the input that Public Works staff had on, uh, and on um, that aspect of the document? They've had, we've had, I think, three and maybe four meetings with uh, Public Works, and they have also reviewed this document and okayed all of the projects. And um, it's in, it's, if Mark feels that it's within their sphere of, ability and um so yeah they have they have indeed reviewed it okay i mean so some of it is the projects that were proposed for prop 68 funding but then there was also just like there's all these things talking about how mulch should be used and and sustainable um landscaping and is that just things that the you as consultants thought are might be good practices or are those things that the the, the city has, or the county, somewhere it mentioned the county had put its stamp on certain things. Um, yeah, I mean, we went to as far as I'm going to, I'm going to a little blank on exactly which document it was, but re in regards, oh, it's in regards to turf management. There was a, um, something that was passed by the city council uh, implementing what, what was believed as, um, I don't know the right way of saying it. This is the pesticides or fertilizers on turf on turf. And so we, and we've reviewed that and, and found and think that there are other viable ways uh, to have a turf grass management system in place. So that would be an example of one. If we've um, in, not only in the prop 68 projects that we've reviewed with them, but also um, the kind of turf grass management things, but also the as regards to the projects as well, they've they've looked at them. So I, um, I'd say fully vetted by Public Works. I feel safe in saying that. So, like for example, sustainable landscapes on page one forty eight. Mm -hmm. A lot of recommendations there. Um, would you say those are coming from? It's a two way street. We've we've recommended them as a as something that. Um, uh, that are, are viable as far as landscapes for on a water management basis. Um, but also actually, we really didn't come up with it. These were things that were comments in from the surveys and from the community process. And so we've kind of, um, you know, uh, given that a little bit of, of meat so that there's language in there so that public works can, you know, enact on, on, some, of those, on some of that thinking, um, knowing what their maintenance regime is 
and um, and how we can enact something like that and begin to work towards something like that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. On page eleven, it mentions Quaternisus Creek. Uh, and it says continue to coordinate maintenance efforts with city of Berkeley and university of California. Um, is this, a, uh, this might, I would think this would be an opportunity to also mention the, uh, nonprofits. And, uh, I know in other parts of the document, um, uh, volunteer groups are mentioned and that the commission should, uh, um, I'm not the commission, but the, uh, the city should uh, should work with nonprofits on maintenance and things like that. Uh, so uh, I had it as page eleven. Oh, I don't um, see page eleven. Cordonius's Creek. Oh, is is this part of the project catalog? Uh, let me see. Vision and goals section. The section is vision and goals. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's something that we will be talking about. Okay. okay. Um, when it, for the first chapter, mm. um, and I do believe that there is something in the first chapter in regards to uh, the su support of um, volunteer commit volunteers. I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. blanking on where exactly it is. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. There were a number of sort of phrasing and type of, there, there's still one instance where the, where uh, Codernesis is misspelled. <laughs> and so it's, it's one that's really easy to misspell. And so maybe uh, uh, I forget exactly what page it's on, but it's, it's spelled C-O-R-D is how it's misspelled. Uh, so if you search for that, it'll, it should come up. Um, and then otherwise, a lot of comments about the later stuff. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's about it for me. Other comments from our questions from commissioners. Okay, seeing none, uh, could, could consultants could take us to the next. Uh, section. Great. I found it actually. It's we have it, we're, and we're going to discuss it. It's page thirty-six. It's support, support of community volunteers. So let me, but I will go back to where we are, and I will apologize. And All of our fonts, for some reason, are messed up. So this does not look graphically right, or as we would like it. It looks totally fine. Um. But just can I just jump in real quick? I see a hand from from the public. Do we want to have public comment by section? Would that be more useful, or do you think we should just um, wait till it's all over? I think we have. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and open up to public comment. Uh, what we have so far, and we can have, we'll have another opportunity at the end for public comment. Uh, staff, if you could let the first person in. Hi, this is Dave Glasser. Can you hear me? Yes. I uh, actually that was part partially that was my question. When was the uh, public going to have an opportunity to comment? And I apologize. I had meant to join earlier, but I uh, had some technical difficulties logging in. Um, again, I had mentioned uh, previously about some uh, issues surrounding accessibility. I note in the report that um, uh, a lot of the grading for uh, a lot of the facilities have a, a C uh, grading for accessibility and ADA access. Uh, so I just want to make sure the commission uh, uh, addresses those uh, those shortfalls. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of people outside of the commission uh, in attendance tonight. So um, just wanted to again uh, talk about the the need for uh, additional accessibility issues surrounding the facilities and the programming for the uh, commission. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. All right. So if the consultants could take it away to the next section. Okay. I apologize. I have something in my eye here. Okay. Um, all right. Great. Um, 
Okay, so um, this is the, let me get everything right here. The vision and vision and goals section. And um, I, I found, we was trying to figure out the best way to actually present this. And I just felt like probably the best is to actually read it to everybody. Um, and uh, I think we should, we could go through, we have uh, three, sorry, here. we have three kind of um, overarching goals um, that are, that the, the, the master plan is guided by three principles. There's inclusive spaces, sustainability, and integrated systems. So now all of you are wondering what is that? Um, and um, we have each a sentence on that or a paragraph and we'll go into that later. Um, but then I thought it would be interesting or it would be important just to read this aloud for everybody to kind of digest. Parks and open space are vital to the quality of life in Albany and play a fundamental role in enhancing overall health and wellness. Albany parks provide space for passive and active recreational opportunities that responds to the needs of all park users and emerging trends. As the primary provider of parks and open space in the city, the city of Albany will plan, develop, and maintain parks and open space with a vision focused on inclusive spaces, sustainability, and integrated systems. Now, uh, I think we just kind of have this as um, the kind of guiding principle, and then we would like to kind of go further into uh, what are uh, inclusive spaces. And so the, the Albany community when, will continue to commit to inclusive spaces. Over the next 10 years, Albany's parks and open spaces will continue to evolve to meet the needs of people of all ages and abilities. New programs will be incorporated to meet local and regional interests and existing parks and open spaces will be maintained to meet high service levels across Albany. Um, I think what would be beneficial, I'm just going to pause real quick, is I'll get through all three of these and then we'll take a little pause, I think, and go over any questions. And then there are specific park goals that we will go into. Um, uh, the Albany community will continue to work towards a sustainable future. Sustainability. Over the next 10 years, Albany will continue to pursue projects and approaches that contribute to climate change mitigation and resilience. Albany will continue to embrace sustainability as essential to making great parks and open spaces. Albany's parks and open spaces will function as an integrated system. Albany's commitment to an integrated park and open space system will give rise to cultural improvements, provide safer access to non-motorized transportation and strengthen ecological corridors. Um, so those are the three, and I'm gonna, we, we should have had an overview slide here it is, I'm just gonna go back a little bit. These are the three kind of guiding principles for the, for the parks master plan. And it would be great um, to have your guys' feedback on these. Um, do these sit well with you? Are there uh, changes to how we word those principles uh, that you would like to make? And I think it'd be good to have that discussion now. And then after that, we would go into, um, there are specific uh, parks and open space calls for each park that we have laid out next. Okay, if commissioners would raise their hands if, uh, if they have any feedback on those or questions. Uh, Commissioner Kent, then Commissioner Price. Uh, I think Commissioner Kent is muted. I, we're not hearing you. Uh, kind of disappeared. Sorry, here I am. Um, yeah, all this is to just say I think it's well written and pretty good. I don't have any comments on these three. I think you broke out the three major goals, I guess, of the, of what we want to do with our open spaces. I thought it was pretty well done. So most of my comments I'll talk about are the specific goals coming up. Right. Okay, Commissioner Price. Yeah, I had a few specific um, comments. Um, the, and perhaps this first one is um, a little bit of semantics, but 
Uh, the first one, the Albany community will com continue to commit to inclusive spaces. And I'm just, I'm wondering if that, if, if that needs to be a little bit more active, you know, we are, are we creating inclusive spaces? Are we building them? Are we um, supporting existing ones? Um, so that's my first comment. And, and also in support of that, I feel that we need, in addition to age and ability, we need to um, add, uh, uh, meet the needs of people of all racial and economic backgrounds as well there. Um, and I'm also wondering if this, I, th I think that one thing I'm not seeing, I'm not sure if I'm seeing reflected in these goals is, or principles is, um, is the effort to, you know, grow to keep pace with growth in population. And maybe it's implicit in the first um, principle of um, meeting local and regional interests, but it seems like it could be a little bit more explicit. Um, on the second, the second principle, um, in addition to climate change mitigation and resiliency, I wonder if we say something, expand a little bit and include, you know, ecological health, biodiversity, habitat, along those lines. And finally, um, in principle three, where you where it says providing safer access to non-motorized transportation, is this kind of specific to like connections between the parks or in general in the community? Um, I think it's meant for, you know, we, we had a lot of, uh, this kind of made its way into the document because of the number of comments that we did get about a connected system and um, uh, the, this kind of a, a network of parks. And, and absent of, we thought a lot of that was going to, we, we think a lot of that actually will be uh, integrated into the upcoming transportation plan that's happening, I think, soon. Um, we thought it would be good in a way of just calling out that um, uh, the way that we move around Albany using our, our feet and pedals uh, would be a good way, would, is a good thought to at least have in, um, uh, uh, in the plan as, as, as just mentioning it, that there's a, there's a health, a healthiness to uh, building those kinds of community, that kind of community and park system. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, once again, yeah, uh, sorry, go ahead, Commissioner Price. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe it's, um, I guess maybe I feel like it should either be sort of specifically about inner, you know, connecting the parks together and and integrating them within the community for non-motorized transportation, or or it's sort of supporting, you know, general um, health through um, active transportation. Maybe it just needs to be a little bit more specific to sure. what the intent is. And then I have, sorry, go ahead. I, if I can, I just, I, I had the, I had the same question and I looked and there are several projects that are listed that involve improving non-motorized access within the parks themselves. So I thought, okay, I, I, I was kind of thinking the same thing you're thinking, but then I looked and said, well, it, it is within the parks and between, but I was okay with it. I just thought I'd mention that. And then just one more quick comment on that. On that one, um, give rise to cultural improvements. I wasn't quite sure what that then. I think that's probably a fancy way of saying um, increasing the cultural opportunities uh, within the park system. Um, uh, more, more art, more programs that um, that might happen along the Ohlone Greenway. Um, I think uh, you know, obviously, Albany is fairly stacked with cultural uh, events, but uh, I think that. 
Um, I think we probably all believe that the more the, the more the merrier and the more the parks can support that is probably better. So I'll admit that's a fancy way of saying of, of probably a more cultural, a, a tie to you know, the kind of cultural parks that support cultural events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or programming or something like that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, Commissioner Beal. Um, yeah, I just hearing this question, um, I had some thoughts to offer uh, about how you know maybe maybe we could clarify this a little bit and expand it. Um, to me, one thing it, you know it's, it's more coming from the other direction. It's we want to encourage a cultural events, uh, a more diverse cultural experience in Albany, um, and that would entail providing more venues um, and working um, just, yeah, I would phrase what you just said in terms of, you know, the active, uh, we're trying to encourage people to do things and we're providing, providing you said providing opportunity, I would say uh, maybe provide an environment, provide an environment for which people can organize and conduct a broader variety of uh, and specific ethnically ethnically diverse cultural activities because this is a way um, I think we could get more uh, more understanding in terms of you know different races and people from different parts of the world through these activities. Okay, yeah, I would I would lend a suggestion of saying um, and uh, the obvious commitment to an integrated park and open space system will give rise to diverse cultural um, experiences. Maybe that would um, uh, seems to integrate what some people are saying. Well, I think what I think where I was going to go with that sentence is something that is more action and it's like it's like that supports a diversity of cultural and the parks, the, the parks and open space system supports um, a, a diverse array of cultural uh, activities within the parks or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Um, the next clause uh, people have mentioned, it says providing safer access to non-motorized transportation. Um, maybe change the word two to four, uh, providing safer access for non-motorized transportation. Um, the word two implies that the city's providing non-motorized transportation that people have access to or something. Uh, so that's a recommendation there. Um, an integrated uh, system, uh, I would, are, is, is the, it might be good to make that clear, like what does that actually mean as far as, uh, what I think of is that we try not to, we, we sometimes focus on individual parks, but we're also thinking about the system as a whole, like, okay, well, how many tennis courts do we have as a whole? How many basketball courts do we have as a whole? What's the arrangement, you know, wh wh where, how far do you have to go to get to the nearest, you know, whatever? Um, and so in that sense, it's an integrated system that we're considering, we're trying to consider the whole while focusing on individual parks at times. Um, but if you're thinking mostly for transportation integrated that way, uh, then I think that should be clarified. Yeah, as, as you're thinking, you're talking there, I actually, uh, I was thinking actually we didn't take this far enough and that um, an integrated system would be even even down to um, we should be considering um, which it may already happen but like the same um, irrigation controllers in all the parks mm. um, uh, the same kind of well we, I think that there are already standards for benches and things like that but um, and, and I'm not usually a fan of standards because it does that there is an originality that is kind of left uh, with each park, but that, that, that there should be even that consideration for, um, um, you know, um, a, sta a standardization that happens across the parks, not, a, not in a way that makes them feel all exactly the same, but um, because I think that's the, that's what makes parks amazing is they're each all different. They shouldn't look the same. Um, but I, I'm, I'd like to see if we could maybe add uh, it to that that level of um, of an integrated system is, uh, I think, would be beneficial. OK, 
Okay, and the last last thing I had on this was on uh, uh, the first um, inclusive spaces. I liked what Commissioner Price was saying, and that was something I had been uh, trying to figure out before this meeting was what to add in addition to ages and abilities. So uh, the Albany Park open spaces will continue to evolve to meet the needs of people of all ages and abilities. Um, and so uh, I think that should be, that's an opportunity to um, list a number of other uh, groups and um, uh, the Commissioner Price had suggested, I think, uh, um, incomes and race, races and, uh, uh, but there could be other, you know, groups that uh, should be added as well. Yeah, we're, we will, we will be adding that agreed. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Kent. Yeah, I just wanted to chime in on that. I was thinking something, but I thought that the word cultural might be more applicable here than racial because it really has to do with the kind of activities people do, which um, probably would cap, you know, we want to have the right sports, the right fields, the right, whatever, whatever cultural game or activity might fit better than kind of a, a racial kind of component, which I think might be, it'd be hard to design to that, I think, but it's more designed to what people do, how people use the space. Uh, and to add on to that, there's also, uh, um, you know, gender as a consideration. I know the city um, has to report on, at least with its recreation, which is not its parks per se, but its recreational programming. There's some sort of state law that required that the city is required to report on the sort of the gender breakdown of uh, um, to to make sure that uh, because I, I guess cities were skewing towards more you know, boy oriented, uh, programming sports and things. And, uh, and so, um, so if there's a way to also include, um, whatever the latest wording on gender is, uh, that would be good. Noted. And I think a very good comment. Okay. Uh, let's see commissioner Beal and commissioner Kent. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I still like the, term I proposed it earlier, I guess, but it should somewhere in here be ethnic culture, because um, it's just it's the idea of, if we just say cultural, I don't know, that's, it, maybe it doesn't really say what we're talking about. So, but it's just a suggestion. I'll go with the flow. Okay. All right. These guys can get out the thesaurus and the uh, <laughs> the latest thinking on how to phrase some of those things. Um, okay, all right. I think that uh, does it for our input on that. If you could take us to the next section. Okay. Okay. So um, the next three pay four pages are in regards um, to setting um, setting a, a similar set of objectives. Um, we had a goal, goals and objectives for each park. So we're, you know, we have a kind of system wide and now we thought it would be, we thought it would be wise um, to have goals and objectives that are uh, relate, that relate to each park space. Um, this was a little bit of a of a, some comments that we have had from from others the citizens and and it also in some re regards references the old master plan which i would say we've um uh we we've skewed a little bit from that and then it was a mostly text based with probably more heavy definitely more heavy on the images but where that was very uh very good on on these kind of goals and objectives i think we were a little light on that and that that that's the, was the intent with this section and specifically with each of these. And so I think what would be good is I'll read through them again. Um, and I will defer to you. Do you want me to stop after each one and have a discussion? Or do you want to go through all um, three, six, nine, eleven 11 of them? How would you like? 
I'm inclined to let's start off by pausing after each one and let's see if we can keep it brief on our comments and uh, if it's too much we can bundle it all to the end okay okay Albany bulb starting with um, the biggest um, goal enable arts culture and recreation to thrive the objectives objective one is clarify and improve access and circulation Objective two is develop shared understanding of city's jurisdictional authority with the Albany community. Uh, objective three, enhance existing recreational and cultural programming. How do those three sit with you folks? And if you'd like me to clarify a name, I'm happy to do that. Those look good to me. Uh, Commissioner uh, Armendariz and then Commissioner Beal. And then Commissioner Kent. Yeah, I just wanted to we could clarify the second develop the shared understanding. Like what what is actually the goal? I'm not, I'm not clear. Um well, as some of you know, is that the, the bulb is an um an uncapped landfill. Um it is um not only um um does uh, the, I'm gonna, it's BCDC, I'm not sure, uh, Bay, Bay, I don't even know what it stands for. We'll just go with BCDC, um, have the have jurisdiction over it. Um, Cal Recycle, which is a state agency. And um, one of the matters that have we've been dancing around with and the city has danced around with is the fact that it is an uncapped landfill and that any work that would need to be done out there would need to um, go through a um, a CEQA process. And um, um, this is obviously a very current um, uh, uh, topic right now. And I know that the, the council has been, uh, there's, there's been, you know, much discussion on uh, where to take this. But um, I think what the intent of this objective is, um, is that um, uh, un, is, is making sure that we are all clear with what the city of Albany can actually do out on the ball um, and make sure that the Albany community understands the complexity of that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> have a follow up on that one, Commissioner Mendries. Um. No, I guess I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I know that in the earlier um, plan there was, you know, talking about the transition plan. And I know that that's something that's just kind of on hold. We're not really sure. I just, I just think that many people who, who, um, I, I don't know. I think there is a lot of understanding <laughs> about, um, about it already and maybe maybe that's just cute because i i have a, and i think you know we've been presented to and, and know a lot about about that but i'm just yeah i i'm not sure if it's, it's it's an important goal <laughs> but i agree wrong. okay uh commissioner beale and commissioner kent um yeah so first of all um um yeah, on, on that note about item two for Albany Bulb, um, no, I would speak uh, in support of this. And the reason uh, this is important is, and it's it's not everyone doesn't have the same level of understanding of things. And that's important for us to understand. Um, so I think, um, yeah, there's the people we hear speaking at the meetings are the more savvy people that understand what's going on. And so they'll they'll be familiar with some of these jurisdictional issues, but the typical person out there at the bulb is a very confusing thing. They don't. There's a, a lot of energy that gets misdirected because it seems like we'd better to go to um, to to the appropriate jurisdiction. Now that said, are we limited to three objectives? If it's only three objectives here, maybe that's not the most that's not one of the three most important. And um, one thing that I see perhaps missing from this list, specific to Albany Bulbs, is 
to be uh, supportive and promote the wildlife in the area because this is this is because it's out on the water. This is a refuge for wildlife. So we need to be sure that whatever we do out there uh, promotes rather than deters things like birds, and butterflies, and other things that are part of the goals of the park system. So that's what I had to say. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Kent. Brian took the wind right out of my sails, but um, I was going to say exactly the same thing. It should have an enhanced, improved biological health and diversity, maybe as a goal. And I also think he's right. David, um, Brian's right about the second goal. It's, it's most people don't understand that. In fact, I myself go out there and see some maintenance issue, and I'm at the city and didn't do it. And I realize, then I realize, oh, it's not really the city's park. So I think it is a confusing thing for a lot of people going out there. Um, not that you want people to call the city and they say, not our problem and hang up the phone. Maybe there's some way kind of transferring the message and, and the communication that can be done in the future, maybe off target here a little bit. So adding, adding a goal about enhancing improved biological health and diversity. And also the last one, or number three, enhance, it says enhance existing recreational cultural program. I thought I might say enhance existing and allow for new recreational and cultural programming because that way we can, if we really want to do culture, culture changes, culture advances. So we need to be able to change with it. Okay. Um, uh, I would add, uh, maybe just get rid of the word existing, enhance recreational and cultural programming or support recreational and cultural programming. Um, yeah, simplify it. Uh, and then... Um, also, I know there's at least some volunteer groups that do planting of natives, uh, of native plants and things, and uh, so that would also d dovetail with some of the suggestions people are, requests people are saying for an, another objective. Um, and uh, for number two, it, it is a little confusing to me in the sense that uh, uh, develop a shared understanding um, I mean, whose goal is that? Is that is is it like Commissioner Kent saying? Is that the city is getting all these calls from people, and or like Commissioner Beal is saying, people are requesting all these things and requesting maintenance on things that the city actually doesn't, you know, have control over, and so the city wants to make sure the public is aware of these things, or or should we just say that? Um, you know, as things come up with the bulb, that uh, the the jurisdictional authority is 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 communicated um, effectively within any you know proposed projects or something. <clears throat> I mean, it is it, never. I mean, is the city going to do a PR uh, campaign for? or educational you know, postcards to everybody explaining the, can, can the consultants um, talk about where that number two, the specific words, you know, develop uh, a shared understanding, you know, comes from? Well, I think, um, I think it, 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 they, it doves tail, it does ta dovetails with item three as well, too. I think that there is, um, as you know, um, there has been a big push for more programming and more activity out on the bulb. And um, on the one hand, I think that every one of us here would does supports that. Um, the unfortunate lever in all of this is the is CEQA. And I think um, while I, I will, I, I'm I'm hearing that, that it's maybe not written so well and. I will also say, yeah. How do we? How do? How does that happen with the city of community? I think the 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 intent of the goal and that excuse me that objective is um, is come to some understanding, which I'm not sure if if we really have one amongst the entire city, and not necessarily just the community, but one that the community and staff and council all can agree on. Um, because for, for an, an example of that would be um, some of the comments that we received in the master plan was um, 
uh, community uh, um, uh, canoe or uh, watercraft storage, right? And okay, well, we can't do that. Well, how about a temporary structure? Well, guess what? A temporary structure is has to be just as built well as a permanent structure and would require footings and grading and all that. Well, the thought is that by doing something like that, you are triggering CEQA. I'm sorry, there's a train rolling right by. Um, and, uh, and so I think it's, it's, it's coming to an understanding of, it's real loud, isn't it? Yeah. You'd think I'm sitting on the railroad yeah. tracks. Well, how about, how about this? Uh, you, you mentioned it dovetails with number three. How, what if we said instead of, what do we get rid of two and for three, we say enhance recreational and cultural programming consistent with the city's jurisdictional authority. I think that's great, actually. And then three, we've just blended two and three. And then the third would then um, would be language regarding the kind of um, ecological, the ecological improvement and the, uh, I'm butchering it right now, um, a, a deeper ecology and um, sustainable landscape out on the ball. Okay. All right. Commissioner Kent and Commissioner Beal. Sounds good. Okay, should we move, we'll move on? Albany Hill? Uh, Commissioner oh, Buell? Sorry? Yeah, um, what I would suggest on this one, the side of number two, I would replace the first five words, develop shared understanding of, with just communicate. Because that, that's all I am really would ask for in this situation, that we better do a better job of communicating. Uh, so something like a plaque uh, at the bulb that shows you know all this stuff it has a little and maybe a page on the website that's it, it doesn't necessarily need to be a big one of the top three things mm -hmm. i don't like the idea of blending one objective with another because it makes it more confusing for the public um unless you're going to blend them with like two sentences like you know one sentence dot and then another sentence and they make sense together but i don't think there's a relationship between these two items um yeah i disagree with that and the consultants say there's a relationship between these two items so i think it i think it does make sense to combine to start with three and then say that that the stuff in three needs to be consistent with the city's jurisdictional authority and then you know that, that there's going to be a communication aspect of that but but just people need to be mindful of the jurisdictional authority when considering those items in number three. I think it's a colon or a semicolon, and I'm not the person to know which one's which, but it's something like that. Okay. That I think that the, yeah, and I think you're right spot on, is that the intent is that we need to clarify. The, 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 the reasoning for wanting to clarify the jurisdictional authority there is because we have had so many comments regarding why don't we do this out there or why don't we do this or can we do this and um and i think um i think it would actually make things a lot better uh in the sense of the the colon semicolon um clarification that i see in my head okay great uh next one okay albany hill uh, goal uh, keep albany hill an ecological icon for the community i think we can all agree it's quite an icon. Um, the objectives. Uh, objective one is continue implementation of the Albany Hill Creekside Master Plan. Um, I think, uh, oh, I'll just go through all. Uh, uh, objective two, uh, integrate additional circulation and improvements. Uh, objective three, develop environmental educational opportunities. Okay. Mr. Kent. Uh, same, uh, the enhance and improve biological health and diversity. Now, and what I would add to that is I think buried in the Creekside Master Plan is, uh, the Albany Hill Creekside Master Plan is uh, things that talk about um, planting natives and removing okay. eucalyptus over time and, and things like that. Good point. All right. Well, I would draw that then. Okay. All right, uh, Commissioner Beal. Um, I'm, I guess I'm not sure if this fits in with one of the other objectives, maybe with the circulation improvements. 
Um, but I'd like to see, you know, based on kind of how I see the community uses the hill, um, I'd like to see more seating up there somehow so that uh, people maybe that aren't as um, young or as uh, active, you know, can get up there that can make it up but can't necessarily keep walking the whole way. Um, that uh, they have so some of the benches, you know, but somehow I think that fits in with this circulation. So uh, maybe uh, I guess circulation is is this the same thing as access? Because it seems like you know a a accessibility maybe is belongs somewhere in this sentence. Anyway, that's what I got. Commissioner Price. I actually agree with Commissioner Kent about the first objective and maybe uh, not the first objective about the biological diversity. I just wonder if the first objective can be like a little bit more clear about implementing the Creekside Master Plan with a focus to enhance biological, ecological, um, whatever, biodiversity, um, just to make it explicit what it is that plan is intending to do, I think. Um, and then integrate additional circulation improvements, um, which I think is great. I, it's not, and maybe this is just sort of a general disconnect for me between the goals and the project catalog, like that goal, which I think is terrific, isn't reflected in the project catalog. And so I like worry about how these goals get lost, you know, in future like implementation study um and you know will we actually will people actually look back at these individual goals and sort of understand what integrated additional circulation improvements means or maybe i'm missing something in the project catalog yeah plus we just spent i think it was over a million dollars on circulation improvements and uh, uh pathways and trail maintenance and things so uh i don't know um, how pressing of a goal that that would be, and I agree with your concerns on the other aspects of it. Could could the consultants come in on that? Uh, I'm sorry, ask that question again. I was scrambling to find the page for Albany Hill. Sorry. Yeah, um, the issue of um, additional circulation improvements as to uh, Commissioner Price was saying that it doesn't look like there's any actual. Um, specific uh, recommended projects later on in the document that that tie into that so yeah. uh, and then i'm saying we the city just finished i think it was over a million dollar project to uh improve the trails and build an ada path and do throughout the whole park so uh, i really don't think there's going to be a whole lot of circulation improvements in in the near future um so yeah um I will default a little bit to Dave on this for my office. I, in my, but my, my sense is the last two are, um, shall we say, uh, com they come from public comment that we've had and that they're, they, um, they fall, they fell a little bit outside the Albany Hill master plan. Um, and that uh, the, integrate additional circulation improvements comes from uh, a number of comments that we've had regarding another uh, creek crossing at a at different other locations. Um, but I will default because uh, what I'm not totally familiar on, David, is in the Albany Hill master plan, are there, is there circulation and, and uh, improvements that have not been implemented yet? Um. From my recollection, uh, I, you know, can't remember. Uh, obviously, yes, the city has integrated uh, access circulation on the crest. I think it was just continuing the, you know, the connections and the, you know, the trail maintenance. Somebody, uh, Commissioner Beal brought up benches and, you know, the, I think there are still some more circulation improvements that could be fostered to, you know, to make those spaces comfortable. Um, that was my experience being on site in Albany Hill, um, that there still could be more opportunities to improve comfort and accessibility. So I think we should certainly add um, 
comfort seating opportunities. I think that some of it is in the, the master plan. Um, um, but I think that the, the, in, the intent of, of item two is um, that we did in the, uh, certainly I can remember someone speaking to me at the, uh, the last community meeting was uh, about additional trails that they thought would be valuable to uh, investigate on uh, specifically, I think on the north side of Albany Hill. Now I'm not exactly sure if that was uh, part of the city of Albany, but I think the, the intent was to investigate other means of, of moving around the hill on Albany's land. That is, that is not necessarily captured in the master plan. Okay, um, other commissioner comment? I, I would just just jump in. I, I just opened up the master plan here, and it it basically does cover all of this stuff. There's a section on access and circulation. There's a thing about adding additional benches and even where to put them, and and so I think a lot of work is being done by continuing implementation of all the well, Craigside master plans. So I think it's probably not inappropriate to spell it out a little bit because you know a little more explicitly. But yeah, I, it, it, I, all these things I think are covered there, but it, it's it's not particularly clear. I think reinforcing them as other additional objectives, I think is probably useful. Uh, I'm not sure how many people like yourself have quick access to the master plan. Yeah, I think highlighting a few of those would be good here. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, Cerrito Creek, um, the goal, maintain and preserve Cerrito Creek's urban and natural ecology, objective one. Continue to coordinate maintenance efforts with the city of El Cerrito, enhance the Cerrito Creek Trail, develop environmental educational opportunities. Um, this, this would be one for me that I, it seems uh, generally fine, but it says uh, maintenance efforts with the city of El Cerrito, so that would be important, but. Uh, should uh, nonprofits be mentioned there? Well, I'm sorry, what was that, that, that comment should, the last week? Should volunteer groups be mentioned here as well? Um, we mentioned that um, you will see in the later part of this. Um, I'm not sure where it is. Uh, you will see it though. It's in the later part of this in our uh, placemaking guidance. Which okay. All right, Commissioner Kent, then Commissioner Beal. Commissioner Kent, you're muted. Sorry for that. In the title, it mentions ecological concerns i just have to get my page i lost it here it is in the title it mentions a natural ecology but it doesn't mention it as an objective and uh, i think same enhance and improve biological health and diversity i also was wondering if this is covered under the albany hill creekside master plan is the creek covered in that and if it is um, maybe you want to give a nod to it i believe it is i'm looking at it too so I think that the Creek, the Albany Hill, equal, I'm sorry, the um, Albany Hill Creekside Master Plan also covers Cerrito, portion of Cedar, Cerrito Creek. So you might want to give a nod to that. Uh, yeah, it's mentioned under Albany Hill, the Creekside, all the, and so yeah, the, I don't know what objective it would go under, but that would be good to add uh, a mention of that master plan there as well. Uh, Commissioner Beal and Commissioner Price. Um, I think, yeah, I want to go along with part of what uh, Commissioner Kent was saying, um, but specifically, yeah, about promoting biological resources. It seems like that's also, as we mentioned with Albany Hill, or Albany Bulb, um, that's also really important for this creek. Um, and, you know, one thing maybe that should be mentioned is trying to restore the fish population. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, that's important. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, Commissioner Price. Um, I actually wanted to uh, second the mentioning of um, supportive nonprofits. You, it does. Um, it is in the project catalog. Um, maintenance costs and responsibilities are shared between the city of Albany and El Cerrito. Coordination with local stewardship groups is recommended. It seems like to me in the goals that that should be included, you know, continue to coordinate maintenance efforts with the city of El Cerrito and um, support of local stewardships also involved in maintenance or something to that effect. I think that seems perfectly reasonable. There are obviously a number of parks in the system that have um, huge support from volunteer groups and I think mentioning that is probably a, a good thing. Yeah, and what I think will help maintain it going forward, uh, the, the city's connection to groups that, you know, the Friends of Five Creeks, for example, that's worked with the city for decades. Um, uh, Commissioner Kent? Just wanted to add on that same note, it's Richmond too, El Cerrito and Richmond. Richmond is from the, which is probably the more difficult one to coordinate with. All right. Uh, Just because it's the next to the, um, huge parking lot mm -hmm. okay next area hmm. i'm not able to advance Just bear with me Okay, uh, Cordonesis Creek. Um, goal, revitalize Cordonesis Creek. I think we, we meant there has been some significant, but I thought that as a totality, is, um, there's, we know that there's still some work to do. So um, objective one, continue to coordinate maintenance efforts with City of Berkeley and University of California. Two, enhance the Cordonesis Creek Trail. Uh, three, develop environmental educational opportunities. Okay, Commissioner, comment, feedback. Um, besides the obvious uh, mentioning nonprofits in number one, and uh, yeah, Commissioner Kent. Well, oh, I thought you were going to say the obvious that I keep repeating: the water yes. quality, hab habitat, biological restoration. Uh huh. Commissioner Price. Um, maybe I should have said this in the previous one too. I'm um, enhance the Cornelius Creek Trail, and maybe this is kind of getting at what Commissioner Kent is saying also. But is there are there other enhancements that were what kind of enhancing are we talking about here? This was meant that is to attempt to go beyond um, the the, uh, the basis of a trail. Um, I think maybe not worded so well, but. And there are there are opportunities along it as pictured for, uh, you know, uh, seating and educational opportunities. So I think that that, that was the intent uh, here was to um, broaden uh, broaden the goal of, of um, the improvements along the creek. So maybe it's like enhancing for connectivity, access, ecological health, and resilience, or something like that. Yeah probably this one was stuck with we're trying to keep things slightly more shorter and but not we didn't get there to fully mm -hmm. communicating it <laughs> um and then yeah i was i was going to bring up the um supportive um stewardship nonprofits. i actually wonder here if there's an opportunity to word it a little bit more strongly in terms of especially with building out the new phase of um uh, expanding maintenance um efforts there management efforts rather than just continuing okay like strengthen instead of continue or something okay next section next uh space okay 
uh, Jewel Terrace Park, Jewel Terrace Park, increase and improve recreational capacity. Um, objective one, clarify relationships between existing recreational programs. Objective two, incorporate improvements that addresses user needs. Objective three, develop a community engagement process for playground improvements. And where did the asterisk go? Um, that, was an, um, that was an update, uh, Commissioner Martin, uh, just to take out the word community needs and replace it with user needs. Hmm. Okay, commission, uh, commission feedback. Commissioner Chang Frank. Um, can you explain the sort of the thinking behind clarify relationships? between existing recreational programs? Right, it seems like there's a lot of um, tested uses at Jewel Terrace Park, especially with dog, dog users on the lawn. Um, so kind of clary, clarifying the relationships between different programs. There's also a basketball court that exists, but it's half court and it's in disrepair. So I think Joel Terrace Park could use a reorganization or at least some definition of boundaries in terms of programming while trying to, you know, squeeze out as much recreational space as you can for such a small neighborhood park. Yeah, and I'm wondering, in kind of the same question for number two, you, I'm just wondering, um, you know, I understand the reason to be ambiguous or to not be specific, but I guess I just... I worried about, you know, I just wonder if that just seems like a vague, kind of vague objective. Mm -hmm. And I guess would I guess I'm the the question would be what like what are those user needs? Have we defined them already through this master plan process? Is that sort of what what you'd be referencing? I guess that's correct. I okay. Think. Okay. Our project catalog addresses some of those uh, project ideas there. Okay. Well, I'm wondering the number one, because I think there is a real importance to like make sure the users of the park, you know, the different parties feel, feel like it's clear. I'm just wondering how else to say that so that it's sure more clear. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, fair point, Commissioner. Um, okay, maybe it's like clear, clearly defined boundaries of programs. Um, okay. Can yeah, I know it's tricky. I'm not saying I have the right the right words. Yeah, yeah. And I think what you're saying is important because it can really improve just neighborhood relationships to be really specific, to to understand sort of that the rules are for or what the boundaries are. But I just wonder how to yeah make that really explicit and make it explicit somehow. Okay. I think I have a way. When I see that sentence, I, I think of later in the document, it talks about the dogs and other things, uh, how to manage all of that. And so, um, so it's, maybe it's intentionally vague in number one, and, and but maybe specifying something there would be helpful. Okay. Uh, okay, others for this one? Uh, otherwise, I think we skipped the Dartmouth tot lot. I am often accused of not uh, of trying to move too fast, so I will granted got caught here. Um, Dartmouth Tatla. Okay. Um, optimize program elements and amenities. Objective one: develop a community engagement process for playground improvements. Uh, objective two: support opportunities for public art. Uh, objective three: replace benches and tables with more comfortable and communal selections. Okay, any, any commissioner feedback? Okay, next item. Okay, key route median uh, goal. Enhance the key route median with appropriate programming objectives. One, expand circulation capacity. Uh, objective two. 
pursue sustainable landscape improvements and I can I can read the crowd and probably um, Commissioner Kent will say something to the effect of uh, ecological and uh, sustainability. So we'll do that. Okay. Others, Commissioner Kent. Actually, I wasn't going to say that here because, oh. <laughs> because it's kind of a mono. You know, it's not really a biodiverse place, but it's fun. Fine with being said, but. Um, so when you say, but I do want to push a little bit. When you say pursue sustainable landscape improvements, you mean you're going to get rid of the lawn and put a meadow there? Is that the idea? I think that that is the intent. That is a, a number of the comments that we did receive um, from the community, and as well, I think it's just um, it's good. It's a good practice. Okay. In that case, yeah, add the uh, biological note. Okay. Commissioner Abbott. I just I, I know that you reference uh, uh, the Solano Avenue Complete Streets Plan in reference to this further in the document. I wondered if there's a place for it here uh, uh, to mention that because uh, we only have two two here and it would work. <laughs> yeah, we we this was this trend uh, um, overlap of the transportation plan and wh where where it gets stuck. And I think that we did default to that is a trend that that change. Um, is going to be more transportated transportation related we do show i think um you know what is shown in the complete streets plan um but that, that suggestion is fine if i think um there could be something of 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 how you know this as a park would react to that or, or what we would do with this due to that or you know i'm not, I'm not sure how you would do that but, but there could be a place here. but again you you mentioned it from the document so i'm uncomfortable to the way to maybe support support uh changes or uh, support um uh, aid in the implementation of the of the transportation plan with that regards to that space like some yeah, language i like think that. that's a good good way of saying it okay commissioner price I was going to say maybe it's like a broader approach of you know uh, you uh, utilizing the complete streets plan to you know integrate key, the key remedian into like the park system as a whole. You know, it's like a more of a integrated piece of the um, pedestrian experience in the system. I think that's that's yeah that takes it one step further and I think that's great and as well I think that also connects it a little bit to uh, the neighbors what the neighbors have done and uh, a need for yeah yeah there are certainly improvements that are going to happen within the curbs but uh, it's, it affects essentially the feel of the park and I think that's a good thing. Commissioner Beal. Um, well I'm noticing we only have two for this one. And I'm just wondering, um, you know, maybe commissioners have been around for longer. Um, have we ever talked about putting a dog in park in this area? Because it seems like this would be a great place to have a dog park in Albany. And um, because of where it's located and it has all this grass here, it just looks perfect to me. But I don't know if anyone else has thoughts on that. Well, I think I'll just butt in here. That's that's what we had. That's kind of the exact reason for the goal is it, it is the appropriate programming. I think when it comes to a, we, the reason we used appropriate was there are obvious safety and circulation issues that we would have to encounter. But we thought that um, the, the uh, and when what is appropriate, that's the we would have to cross that list. I think when those um, come up. Um, but I think that is the intent of the goal is to broaden um, the programming that happens along key route median with the things that we think are appropriate for the neighborhood. Um, and that would be something that would uh, dis further discussion would have to happen, obviously, later. Commissioner Chang Frank. Yeah, um, I, I did feel like the objectives didn't really address the goal there. And maybe that's part of the goal. We don't know what the community would or, and neighbors would really want and find acceptable. So could that be one of the third objectives is explore or, you know, discover what the community wants, something to the effect of doing community engagement community around. Community outreach, community process, yes. Yeah, okay, thanks. That, that was one of the items on the previous one, I think, around Dartmouth 
taught a lot to explore community input or whatever it was said. Uh, I said develop a community engagement process for playground improvements is what the taught lot said. So maybe something along those lines for the for key root. Okay, next item. Okay, Ocean View Park. Um, uh, reformat facilities to meet community need. Uh, objective one, envision and implement new park programs. In objective two, enhance recreational programming, especially those that enable community building. Objective three, continue to focus on accessibility at this park, especially for organized recreation. Okay. Oh, I skipped Memorial Park. I'm having problems with the middle one. My, my. <laughs> let's just do. Uh, let's just do Ocean View. We're on okay. this. We'll go, we'll go back to Memorial. Commissioner Kent. Yeah, just the wordsmithing. It says continue to focus. That's a big. It might be continue to improve uh, improve on accessibility of the park or something of that sort. Others. Okay, Memorial Park. Uh, Memorial Park uh, goal: integrate existing and and future uses. Uh, objective one is optimize available space on site. Objective two, enhance recreational programming. And objective three, pursue sustainable landscape improvements. Any feedback? Commissioner Price. Um, I guess. Objective one, um, optimize available space on site is seemed vague to me. And um, what are we optimizing for, you know, community programming or optimizing for community visioning process or um, uh, um. This danced around um, uh, what we, at least what we, what we see as opportunities for uh, potentially more programming at Memorial Park. And there are, we just think that there are some locations where there's, it's maybe the space is not um, used um, as efficiently as it could be, or as well as to its highest and best use. And I think, um, especially in Albany, uh, we should be um, trying to find every nook and cranny to um, use it to the best of the ability. Uh, and I will, for example, there is a structure uh, over by the baseball field. And, um, you know, I, I know the baseball field occasionally uses it, um, but like that would be an example of a space that's not currently being used. We sh how do we find uses? How can we optimize that structure in a way that is benefit for the benefit of, of more than the few that use it right now? Mm. So maybe it's, it's like optimizing for expanded community uses or, or something like that or yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, what I pictured when I read that, that was the uh, possibly multi, what do you call it, multi-sport uh, tennis court area or or trying to get another sport or two or uh, activity on the baseball field. Um, does that seem consistent with optimized available space? Uh -huh. um, Commissioner Chang Frank. Yeah, I mean, just one, I, I agree, it'd be great, to, um, like Commissioner Price suggested, to maybe make clear what would you, what would we optimize for, and, you know, to say that it's for community multi-use, something like that, so that um, it's clear that it's optimized for more greater community, you know, recreation opportunities, something to that effect. But the other thing, I, I kind of want to address the goal, because... I felt like the goal integrate existing and future. We don't know what those future uses are. Do we, or you, I guess, I just wonder about that goal and if it could be 
you know, especially since Memorial Park is like the highest usage park, can we be more um, specific there or not specific, but have a, have a goal that's sort of more like broader? Um, I think this uh, goal was a little borne out from, um, is, is, is a slight, uh, what we have kind of seen is a is sort of semi reactional planning or what reactional uh, things that have happened there and that there's an opportunity for as we um, uh, do f future uses and revamp future uses that those can be better integrated with each other um, um, for better for worse the top lot is where that it where it is now um my question would be was that the best spot for it um that's just one example i think that 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 and so that was the intent it's again we probably trying to wordsmith these down to be a little more tighter than they should be but i think that the goal of integrating existing and future uses is meant to um we should be thinking about the the park in a in a in 20 or year, year cycles of um what do we have now? What do we need? And how can we um, build that in? So another example would be when it is time, when it comes time to renovate the big playground there, is that the best spot? Maybe not. I don't know. Um, and I think that's the, that's the, that's what we're aiming for in that goal. Um, okay. Um, other feedback on Memorial Park. Okay, uh, next item. And then when we're done with these, let's open it up to public uh, comment. Well, I will make it faster because I'll skip the middle one on this one. Um, <laughs> Maloney Greenway. Um, goal, fill the Greenway with exciting and sustainable programs. Objective one, envision and implement new recreational programming study additional park amenities, pursue sustainable landscape improvements. Okay, uh, Commissioner Feedback. Commissioner Kent. Uh, again, with the second objective is just to study additional park amenities. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't we want to be a little more active, study and implement or study and pursue? Seems studying just seems kind of passive. Yes, uh, Commissioner can study additional park amenities. I think the parentheses is the restrooms uh, that have been oh. identified as a possible improvement along the Ohlone Greenway. Um, we can, I, but, I think you Yeah, I think David, his point is, and I wonder, I wonder how the commission feels is, and I don't know, is, 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 is specifically noting that actually, because it is something that it, um, well, well, these just reflect the larger sheets that you have all the ideas on, right? Correct. If that's mentioned on that sheet, I don't know if we really need to call it out as a specific objective. Sure, correct. The, the Ohlone Greenway page has uh, all kinds of ideas for what to put up and down there. That's what I thought was number two was, but it sounds like you're thinking that's recreational programming. That's number correct. One. Yeah. Hmm. But recreational programming to me almost kind of sounds like what the recreation department does. The uh, They do the programming of recreational activities, which actually isn't under our purview. I see. Um, maybe there's a better phrase than recreational programming. That sounds that sounds right. <laughs> I think also, let's see if I can split the hair on this one. The, that one is there, it was rec that, that we were, you know, wanting to increase recreational programming, but I think also, as you've noted on that page, is there are uh, sculptural gardens, uh, game courts, which I think it fall, we've, we thought that fell under. We study additional park amenities. Um, I think was captured by um, the 
two, two things specifically was uh, uh, permanent restroom facilities, but also, also um, um, lighting improvements along the Ohlone Greenway. Um, while we know that recently uh, LEDs, I think, were put in at certain times, is I think that one of the things that when we were talking with Mark, that there's a, uh, and, and it has been noted in community outreach or in, in, in comments, is there, there are, it, it could use another layer of lighting to make people feel safe. Uh, that's not the right way of saying it, um, but. Um, For future uses. Yeah. More and high qual more and higher quality lighting basically is it and, and then and now now I've finally figured out what I wanted to say, but path more path lighting in a sense. Whereas I think the way that it's lit now, it's kind of from the bar tracks, it's kind of everything. And I think that there's an opportunity to uh, focus in on where people are actually walking and 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 a, and a level of comfort. Pedestrian scale lighting. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, for number one, should it maybe say recreational infrastructure or something? Because again, uh, when I see recreational programming, I picture some of the things the city has had, like yoga classes or other things like on the greenway. Um, I, I think it's semantics. Uh, I mean, but I guess in in my landscape or architecture background, I, I think about recreational programming as a space that's programmed for recreation, but I could see your point, Commissioner, that this could mean classes or events. So we could specify and nail that, nail that down. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other comments? All right, next. Okay, Peggy Thompson, Pierce Street Park goal. Make a safe, accessible, and vibrant park. Um, objective one, envision and implement new recreational programming. Two, improve active transportation circulation. Three, pursue sustainable landscape improvements. Feedback. Okay. I know some of those are reflected later on in the document. Uh, Commissioner Kent? I was just going to say maybe improve access and active transportation circulation. Isn't access one of the big issues on that? that? That's correct, Commissioner. I think that's a good addition to that. Other feedback? I, I, I'm wondering if, if we can say something here uh, that, that kind of acknowledges kind of the unique role that this park plays. Uh, this is on a hill where people don't have a place for kids to run in the backyard. This is near large um, apartment and condominium buildings where kids don't have a, a lot. So it's fulfilling a, a very particular role here that other parks aren't really playing is it's the only outlet for some of these folks to, to, to have flat ground to run on. And I don't, you know, so it almost becomes a bit of an equity issue um, uh, at this park. And I wonder if we can add that in here just to give us a little more meat right on this this particular objective and then with the prop 68 analysis apparently the state identified it as the only park with um th those kind of issues yeah i'm afraid i don't have a suggestion for how to do that at this point but that's just what came to mind as, as i looked at it um maybe say uh implement new recreational programming that um you know that supports the or somehow the whatever the state's designation is i don't is there some specific i think it's underserved yeah the this an under um the underserved community or an underserved park i guess underserved community um somehow weave that in to um into the wording for instance it is for this reason i would really oppose putting pickleball courts here Right, because this, this is this is the only lawn these folks have access to, basically, or the only place for them to, to play soccer or something. So it's an equity issue there, even though it would be an ideal location otherwise. So that's why I see this thought coming into play. And, and kind of to pile on that point, though, in a, in is that we do think that's what the in, envision and implement new recreation programming is that this park desperately needs 
to have an, another round of community input into um, how can we maximize, how can we make this the, um, you know, the Memorial Park, another Memorial Park, essentially, right? There, we need, um, um, it just needs more programming and it needs to be a vibrant park. And I think that, that the community voice needs to shine out when that does happen. Okay, Commissioner Beal. Um, no, he, he covered what I wanted okay. to say. Great, thanks. Commissioner Chang Frank. So oh, just um, um, Brennan, your your comments about that um, reaching out to the community, did you want to capture that somehow or do you feel like that's already in there? I'm just wondering if you want to put that in there. That's something that we can certainly as a commission try to take on. It's, you know, it's an objective we can try to actually yeah. meet. Um, like, like with the tot lot, it said, you know, reach out to the community and then decide what to do. David, do we have that anywhere else? Um, I, I, I guess that. it's kind of a no-brainer in terms of Peggy Thompson improvements that there should be a community engagement process, but I think that's a fair point. We should just spell it out, develop a com community engagement process for additional recreational improvements. Okay. Um, other feedback? Okay. Um, that's the last of these, right? It's, this is a good time. That, to is, that is correct. This would okay. be a good time to go to pub public right. comment. Go to public comment. Um, I see we have one attendee. Uh, yes, great. Uh, staff, you could let uh, Susan Schwartz in. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. I apologize, I'm not on visuals. Um, Thank you, I've enjoyed listening to this. Um, we feel that uh, the most important uh, changes here are have been already said very eloquently uh, by the commissioners and there were repeated requests for wording on ecological health, biodiversity, water quality, wildlife. Those should be in the general introduction and in the relevant specific parks. That is the essence of integrating open spaces into your commission's responsibility, which is a recent thing and is not in the past plan. Um, Al Albany's uh, extraordinary natural area, uh, areas are both a gift and a burden, and they're going, they really should be emphasized specifically in this plan. A few uh, specifics, Albany Hill Creekside Master Plan does not include Cerrito Creek uh, to San Pablo where both sides are in Albany and where incidentally a stray salmon was rescued a few days ago. Um, I don't know how you want to deal with it. You just should be aware of that. If you want to improve the trail, you're going to have to deal with that part. On Coternices Creek, much more is needed than continued cooperation on maintenance. Things have been going pretty well below 8th Street, where there is a maintenance fund that won't last forever and a memorandum of understanding. Um, adjacent to your Little League fields and in Albany, um, the, the creek is impassable because of tents and a solid paving of homeless people's trash that reeks of urine and feces. You cannot go there. We will not go there. This has been going on for six months now. There is very serious flood problems. It's a threat to Berkeley, not to Albany, but in from San Pablo down to 10, where no one is doing any maintenance. Um, so what you need to say is improved cooperation. Oh yes, and UC Berkeley is talking about defining the creek as not part of University Village, which means they won't be doing what they're doing now. Um, one um, final detail, uh, do you really want to fill the Ohlone Greenway with exciting and sustainable programs? I'm older than all of you, I believe. Some people just like walking in green space. What about talking about peace, nature, and beauty? These are parts of a park system that do not seem to be mentioned anywhere 
in this plan. Uh, and Albany has extraordinary opportunities to provide them to its citizen. I think that should be in the plan. Uh, finally, I am disturbed by the statement that because people did not, people said that maintenance was a high priority, but did not, but did not suggest projects that therefore you weren't going to talk about maintenance. By definition, um, efficient, effective, and environmentally sustainable maintenance uh, is not a specific project. It is a priority of your citizens. And somewhere in this plan, quite prominently, continued efforts and review by this commission and by the relevant departments in that direction should be a very specific goal. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so it sounded like we had specific recommendations for each creek. Do consultants feel like they have the feedback needed uh, to strengthen that? Can we go back to Co uh, Corridor Nisus Creek? Uh, the individual page, or, or is this good enough here? Um, yeah, the goals. Yeah, individual page. I, I can't really read it. Sorry. And so the suggestion was, the recommendation was to, I think, to change the word continue to maybe strengthen or something more. Uh, did, did anybody else uh, uh, hear something that uh, could reflect that sentiment better? I know that we'd already made some changes to this sentence, so I'm not, I, I think um, uh, Susan's comment is, is well made, and, and so we need to, but we need to work with the already modified version. <laughs> yeah. Right. And we did mention um, working with volunteer groups, right? Wasn't yeah. that one of the comments added here? Yeah. And speaking of that, maybe it should be one of the overall objectives is to encourage citizens to help out and volunteer, you know, not just expect the city to, to do everything. I mean, little things like picking up trash, you know, stuff like that. I don't know where that would be fit into this, but you know, you know, involving the community members in their community is would be kind of a goal somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where that would end up. Yeah. And I was wondering if, if we could capture some of the things that we were talking about before by just adding the word restoration. So strengthen to coordinate restoration and maintenance efforts. Uh, that might cover uh, some of what folks are talking about. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Don't don't maintain it in a state of disrepair. <laughs> you know. In a, uh, you know. Restore it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe can I, can I yeah. jump in? Maybe the community thing goes under sustainability. It might, it might be in, under the general phase sustainability. It would, might end up with something something to the effect: Albany will continue to em embrace sustainability as essential to making great parks and open spaces, and encourages citizens to participate uh, in volunteer efforts. And pre pandemic, the city was getting, uh, I get maybe each each year each park. Uh, annually, each park has its moment to shine of volunteers to come and help out. So, um, Isabel, is that, uh, is there, a, sounds like Commissioner Kent's suggestion, would it, would it reflect that effort of the city? Uh, yes, it would. Uh, you know, we, we've stopped uh, because of the pandemic, but um, we plan to resume those at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the way. Okay. All right. So it sounds like that's a good addition to which page was that, Commissioner Kent? Uh, that was under the paragraph explaining what sustainability is, right? Mm -hmm. It's page 11. Okay. All right. So I think that finishes off that, the, the open space, park and open space goals. So if the uh, consultants could take us to the next part. Okay. I've been trying to figure out how I was going to do the next part. So, um, 
I thought what would be useful is the next section is our placemaking catalog, which um, essentially becomes is the start of the appendix uh, that will go at the end of the catalog or end of the master plan. Um, there, uh, there are th um, three uh, subsections of the placemaking catalog. The first is the park amenities and program inventory, um, which is these four pages. I, I, I can zoom in on them if you'd like. But essentially, one of the tasks that we were given was um, to um, document what we have, what do what is currently present at all of the parks. And so on our many site visits and park walks, uh, we've documented all the different kinds of benches. Uh, there are product benches and custom wood benches. There are the different kinds of playgrounds, the different kinds of signage. Um, and so this is really meant to be just that. It's like the um, parks stuff Bible. Um, I don't know if there's much to get your comment on, but this was of part of our one of our tasks in the master plan. Um, and I guess if there are any questions, feel free to jump in. Okay. The, the, I, I had a couple of questions. One was uh, the vocabulary. It, it says um, product bench is the first thing. And that doesn't mean much to me. As I kept looking at the pictures, I, I think I thought I eventually realized maybe that means like a commercial, like commercially available bench. That's correct. Um, is that like standard language in the industry? I or think what, it... what we were trying to decipher and uh, sort of um, – what we were trying to differentiate what between was a, a, a product that is off the shelf mm -hmm. that is a catalog, which maybe that might be a better way of saying it rather than product. It's catalog bench. And yeah, the, that sounds mm -hmm. and the plethora of, um, of unique bench, other benches, which are mostly the custom wood benches that we've found. And, um, and so that was really the, the intent there. Another question I had was just, uh, I think in the language on the one of the early pages, it said uh, in this section, it said, uh, it's, this is not meant to be exhaustive. Is that right? Because when I look at some of these, for example, community message boards, uh, I know it, you know, it's missing the, the one in the dog, the new one in the dog park. And, uh, uh, and there's other things like, you know, there's there's several examples for bike racks that look identical, but yet there's other bike racks around the city that aren't shown. So um, how should people think about the selection here? Um, that's precisely it. I don't think it's meant to be exhaustive. And as well, there were probably fine jurisdictional boundaries between parks and streets that we also paid it probably were paying trying to attempt to pay attention to. Um, and so I think the way that we were categorizing this is these are the, the most of the the ones that we found in the parks. I'm sure that there will be other ones that were in the right of way, but um, it was meant to be park focused. Okay, so it says though this inventory is not exhaustive. So I think that's um, important. Uh... Okay, other comments in general about the the visual? I love how visual it is. It's very, it's very nice how that's captured. Um, other general comments, questions? Okay, I, I will move on. Um, oh, oh, actually, one, one other thing about park signage. Uh, it's come up before the commission in the past to potentially make signage uh, uh, consistent across the parks, but people, this type of signage that's shown here isn't usually what's referred to. It's usually we've uh, discussed things like um, uh, rules and regulations and things like that. So, uh, but there's sort of a hodgepodge of saying what the rules are at various parks. And uh, so, um, so may, I think maybe some, it'd be good to include some pictures of other kinds of signs posted in parks that are maybe rural, rural related. 
That's a that's a great idea, Commissioner. Yes, we're aware that these are technically part of the act of transportation signage. So I did take lots of pictures of rules and regs, so I, I can most certainly update this uh, um, this sheet. Okay. All right. We're seeing no other comments on I, I have a, I have a comment. Oh, oh okay. Um, sorry. Just, sorry. Go ahead. Not to add more work, but um, fencing might be something that, if you have the pictures already, it's kind of can define a space. We don't have fencing. No, we do not have any fencing. I could at least look in our 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 inventory photographs and and find some opportunities to include that. Hey, Commissioner Beal. Yeah, I just wanted to second that idea. I think um, fencing is an important uh, asset in parks, and um, it's important to have good relations between the parks and the neighbors and addressing any screening issues, um, you know, will help with that. So. Okay, the next section. Okay. I've been alerted. Oh, that we're having some yeah, I, I issues can. here. Yeah. It looks great on, I don't know. Uh, perfect, perfect time, but it's nothing we can avoid now. So there's, um, there is something on this page that is somehow not rendering in the, there we go. I'm not sure why, but it's showing up here. Um, Part of our task, and the font is all pixelated, so we're tech, tech shooting this, um, but part of our task for the master plan was a memorial inventory. Um, and I'm just, I'll just read this. Memorials on city property can be categorized into four types. Monuments, public art memorials, memorial groves, and plaques. At this time, the following memorials represent an ever, in, an ever incomplete, but first step toward an inventory of memorials honors and other related installations on public land. The uh, city of Albany can develop a formal process by which to include more memorials as they are requested. Private memorials in city parks and open space approved by the city council are included in city public records. Um, and now I'm gonna try to go back to, uh, well, no, I won't. This is the, the map of the ones that we, um, that we found uh, that exist within the parks. Um, and then we have also categorized those in what we thought were um, those categories, the, the monuments, public art memorials, and memorial groves. And so we have taken pictures and, and logged all of those in here. Um, but like we said, um, there are some that are that um, that do not fall on this list, but like, for instance, are listed on the the on the, the website. And David, do you want to clarify that in any way, just so that I'm not tripping over my... I'm sorry, can you clarify that? Uh, th there are there are some that we have pictures, um, but there are also some on the on the website that we that are not necessarily in the parks, but that there are m memorials. Oh, I see. These plaques. ones here, uh, these are historic plaques that are, are actually in the public right-of-way, not necessarily in the parks and public spaces. So That's these are all... Um, kind of keying in some moments of Albany's history. And okay. we just thought it'd be good to, to map those and include that um, for, for our purposes. That was the clarification I was looking for. These yeah. are not in the parks, but they are historical plaques. And, and we included those as well. Um, okay. Um, um, I had some comments on the memorials. Please do. And looks like Commissioner Kent did as well. You want to start with Commissioner Kent? Sorry, I didn't. My hand is just fell off. Um, Although this was really cool, I like this thing. I learned a lot on the sheet. Go on. Yeah, I like the visual, the photos, but I have some concerns. Go ahead, Commissioner Abbott. Oh, I, I just had a couple of items. Uh, uh, but the one I wanted to mention in particular was number two. I. I think we really need to distinguish the Shrine of Freedom from the memorial bench back there. Uh, yeah, that was one of mine, uh, yeah. Uh, because they are really separate. And and if you want a little information on this, you'll, uh, 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 Council Member Mason is a, a historian in, of this and, and knows quite a bit about it. 
and would 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 talk to you about it quite a bit. Then the other thing is, I just had another one to add, but I, I guess you're not really looking for that right now. So uh, oh no, please that. mention it. We're happy to add it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, well, Solano and Keynes, there's the clock for Jerome Blank Memorial Clock. I actually uh, I have a I have a model of it right here. <laughs> um, okay. and, and I think I think uh, I, if I remember this. Uh, idea of, of getting an inventory of memorials kind of grew out of the, the the debates regarding memorials nationwide. So that's why we're really we are hoping ultimately, and not not necessarily from you folks, but to build a, a complete list. Yeah, the charge of the on the contract, I believe, was it was for citywide, not just parks. So uh, I think it's important to have uh, the full list. Um, I would I would add you know there's some things that are uh, like at the community center there was recently a dedication of the Cheryl Gates craft room so it was a craft room craft room that wasn't named before and now it's named after Cheryl Gates who passed away uh, there's the Edith Stone room at the library um, so then there's not a plaque necessarily uh, for these but they're named spaces uh, that. Um, like Commissioner Abbott was saying, uh, you know, people around the country have been looking at their named places, their named things, their their monuments of all types, uh, honors and things. Uh, and so, but we also have, uh, as a commission, we approve, um, you know, tree planting, including memorial trees. And we had one a couple of years ago with uh, Peggy McQuaid, uh, sitting council member, um, dedicated one. Uh, which is in Memorial Park right now, um, and I'm sure there are others, but I don't know what they are. Uh, so that would be something else that should be included. Um, and I don't see any benches, uh, but that's a standard thing cities do is to um, put a uh, badge on a bench. Do you? Uh, does anybody know of anything like that in Albany? I do know, uh, I guess it's the corner, it's Solano at, um, I believe, Cornell. That bench there is dedicated to, I think, the original crossing guard. Uh, and it, there's a plaque there. And just, just quickly, back on Memorial Park, um, uh, Memorial Park was designed for memorial trees. They intentionally did not plant, you know, enough trees to leave room for additional memorial trees to be planted, you know, over the decades. And there might might be a way to reference that here, although you've already got four items at all. <laughs> and I think you can also see the complexity of the rock and hard place that we are. It's that I think technically we were tasked with memorials, and I, if I'm correct, and so that's where we felt like this. We we've done uh, we've done we feel like we did the spirit of that, and then we and then that's where this kind of the domino of well, what about public art memorials? And then what about, and I think, but it was very apropos that like the Memorial Grove. And then we started on this path of like, well, now we're talking about plaques. We didn't know really where to draw the line. And and as well, now, it, now, the, now there's memorial rooms within buildings. It kind of felt, it's like, we didn't know where to draw the parentheses. And so I think um, we felt like in the spirit of the what was requested, it was a map of memorials in, in public space and that's where um, we ended with this, I guess. So Isabel, is that something you can address? Do you have the language of the contract in front of you or could you look that up? No, I don't have the language of the contract in front of me, but what I can say is in my discussions with uh, Brennan and David, that's what we concluded the scope would be for the consultants. And the city clerk and I have been working on a list of the private memorials on public land. Uh, and that's a separate project that we're doing um, ourselves. And, uh, and that's why we, we also included that last sentence in this uh, chapter that, um, you know, private memorials in city parks and open spaces. And we could add, you know, on public right of way, but I, I guess that's also, uh, you know, public space um, is included in the city's public record. And what we're trying to do is collecting all of that information from you know, many, many, many years, and it includes trees and benches and plaques 
and uh, collecting that and creating a um, you know some sort of list and spreadsheet that would be uh, updated every time the city council um, you know uh, approves a new memorial. The um, the, the Albany has a, a historical society. Um, is that uh, was that group um, a stakeholder that was consulted on this aspect of things? They actually assisted us with the city plaques. So yes, we did consult with them. We did okay. that, of course. Um, it'd be good to have they been contacted recently since this became public? No, they have not. That would be good to do before it's presented to the city council to have their eyes on it. And uh, is, is there a way that can happen? Sure, we yeah, could. We, yeah, we could easily yeah, just send yeah, us. Okay, uh, other, oh, I have a few other things, but uh, actually let me just finish that and then we'll, uh, so I would second the fact that number two is two things, the Shrine of Freedom and the, the bench with its plaques are completely separate. Okay. Um, and uh, and we'll, should be handled separately. So uh, then, a couple of them on the on the map. I liked how for Memorial Park you grouped a whole bunch of them uh, in one circle. There's a few others that I think should have that for clarity. So uh, item numbers three and five should be grouped together into one circle. Seven, eight, and nine together in one circle, and twelve and thirteen, uh, as I as I understand where these things are. Um, and that would, because uh, otherwise you get things like number eight looks like it's on a, a, yeah. a, block, a block away from key root. Yeah. Um, but it's actually right there with number seven. So, uh, and then number nine, I guess, might be on the greenway. So maybe it shouldn't be grouped. But anyway, if, if you could, uh, I think three and five, I think seven, eight, and nine, and I think 12 and 13 uh, are all basically in the same spot. And so it should be in a, a, a single circle like you have for Memorial Park, which I think was a good idea. That's a great uh, edit. We'll uh, we'll take note of that. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that was. Let's see. Yeah, that was it for me on memorials. Um, other comments on memorials? Okay. Seeing okay. none. Uh, next part. Can I, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but sure. uh, the memorial tree at Memorial Park, just can I have like a ballpark uh, location for that tree if they're, you know. Uh, if, no, it's okay, David, because okay. We, it's a private memorial. So oh, it, they will be captured in the list that we're compiling. I see, okay. In-house, in yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. It's on the northeast corner. I walk by it a lot, I think. I see. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, the next section um is what let's see i'll just go it by slide by slide excuse me um again all the text is rendering weird so uh is what we call our placemaking guidance um and we thought that this was um a way to kind of a, a in a way in a way lean lean a little into the park's master plan um as that as um as we have talked about a lot of topics um, and this was the, the kind of section that we felt was a way to um, identify and, and uh, um, identify a path forward for some of the Im improvements and the reasoning for those improvements. Um, and I'm going to start off with the most important, and I don't, it's unfortunate that Susan's not here on the call any longer, but we thought it was really important uh, to, to note sustainable landscapes across the entire spectrum of all the parks. Um, and um, we have seven, there are seven principles of bay friendly landscapes. I, I, I'm, I don't need to read through all of this, but um, we thought that it was really important um, um, uh, to include um, in, the, in the parks master plan. And it covers everything from, uh, you know, sustainably locally, uh, uh, locally, uh, local plant material natives, um, uh, nurturing the soil, conserving water, uh, how we can conserve energy, 
protecting water and air quality and how we can create uh, and protect wildlife habitat. So we, we think that this is a very robust page and really addresses um, the kind of sustainable landscapes that we have all touched upon today. Um, this is also continued and we, we got some um, language regarding um, State Bill 1383. Um, I will let David just quickly touch on this because he, he was the one that wrote this one in there and I just want to let him put that in there. Yeah, so there's a new policy coming up, uh, it, it, which will start in January 1st, 2022. And it's really mandating the diversion of compost and mulch away from the landfills and using it within uh, municipalities and jurisdiction. So that really means that there's going to be a lot of compost and mulch um, available in the city of Albany, as well as multiple municipalities across the state. I worked with Elizabeth Cadre uh, on this. She's a sustainability coordinator of Albany, and she just gave some general guidance on compost application, mulch application, and then something really interesting called community distribution hubs. So quite literally giving away free compost and mulch to any Albany resident. Um, there, that, that process still needs to be worked out, I believe, to identify appropriate locations for community distribution hubs. Um, I also included some sheet mulching guidance uh, that's provided by Stop Waste, uh, another California state, or excuse me, Alameda County um, agency that uh, is promoting more sustainable uses of compost and mulch. So uh, I hope, hopefully this helps um, begin this conversion of shifting towards sustainable landscapes. Okay. Um, the, the next one is, um, is a discussion about seating elements and gathering areas. And I think that we all like to gather in parks and we and this was something that the um, public works was uh, really interested in was um, uh, how we can address seating in all of our parks. And I think that there is, there's always room for a standard park bench uh, that also might be addressed when people start donating uh, uh, benches. Um, but that we also thought that the kind of things that make Albany and parks unique are the kind of non-standard seating elements, the volunteer built benches, and the ability to uh, reuse and recycle natural elements, not only in play, which we discuss later, but also um, in the parks for seating elements as well. Um, uh, playground and exercise equipment. Um, we thought that um, there has been a lot of discussion on these four items, and we think that uh, playgrounds that embrace an, the natural world and the natural elements are things is something that we should include. Um, but most also very importantly are playgrounds that are inclusive to all those with um, mobility and uh, mobility um, and, uh, abilities. Um, we also think that uh, playgrounds should be safe, but also challenging playgrounds. Um, and that sh the, they should challenge children's physical abilities and problem sc uh, solving skills. And then lastly is, uh, which was mentioned quite a bit in the community process was um, uh, more access to outdoor exercise equipment. I think obviously the pandemic heightened meant much of this. Um, and I think it's a great opportunity to include um, in many of the parks. Um, uh, this place banking um, item was again something that we got a lot of community feedback on was um, the creation of shade um, and as, as well we are promoting these in a few different ways of, of um, shade sales and shade structures um, but also the increase of an urban forestry management within the parks and that includes planting for instance planting more of those memorial trees in memorial park but in general um, a, a larger program for for um, planting more trees um, um, this also this slide um, as a placemaking uh, guidance also uh, hinges also or um, is, is somewhat of a carryover from some of the comments again um, but that we thought there were enough uh, comments from the community regarding uh, active transportation. And some of those lie within the public, uh, public parks. Um, for instance, is there is a goal 
to con connect um, uh, a bike path through Peggy Thompson Park, as an example. Probably something that could be handled in an active transportation, but in the end, it goes through a park. And so we felt that there are um, these kind of transportation elements um, that did um, cross cross into that into the parks department, and so we thought it was important to include those here as important um, or identified projects um, within the master plan. Um, it has been mentioned a couple of times, uh, even at the pros commission, um, but also again, the community is something that it desires is how we can encourage uh, non-traditional parks and open spaces um, for four ideas of those were the, were the obviously the increase of parklets um, and how we continue and how Albany continues doing street closures and slow streets on periodic times. Um, while limited, but I think it's something that we should take advantage of as possible if, is the unused public right of ways. And then in, as well, slightly outside of the of the park's jurisdiction, but is the privately owned public spaces that should we should encourage and support in um, those the development of those. Um, and then lastly, it's been mentioned um, a number of times, but um, is the su support of community volunteers. Um, and I think that we can all uh, support this. It's all we know something that this is kind of what makes Albany so fantastic is the number of people that are so dedicated um, towards that, but finding ways to help and continue to support that through um, uh, grant funding and other uh, arms to help support these groups and prop them up. Um, that is the last slide that I have um, and would just really happy to take any more further comment on that kind of last section uh, of the of the plan. Okay, let's do that with commissioners and then we'll uh, get public uh, input. Uh, time for public comment afterwards. Uh, Commissioner Kent, then Price, then Beal. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that Bay Friendly has changed their names to Rescape, which you probably know, but they now have eight principles. So the eighth one is a carbon sequestering. I'm going to add that in. Uh, yes, I think that is a good update. Um, we can. I don't think the city's updated yet, so you can be the first here. It's, yeah, that, I know Albany has passed the Bay Friendly Landscape Ordinance, hence why I went with that that guidance, but sure, we can <laughs> pitch through Escape. Okay, Commissioner Price. Um, I was gonna, I wanna talk a little bit more about carbon sequestration and leaning into the urban forestry um, part and maybe the, the uh, I, you know, there's overlap between the sustainable landscapes and the ur urban forestry section. Um, and I'm, I do feel like in general, this plan overall, um, I think lacks a little emphasis on urban forestry. And I wonder if this is where we need to expand it. Um, the, um, you know, we've talked about on this commission about the urban forestry or tree master plan um, that I know that there's, um, uh, there's been talk of doing or is underway. Um, and so this might be in a, a place to talk about that um, as a resource. And the, you know, Albany Climate Action Plan um, is pretty explicit about growing our urban forest for carbon sequestration. And I think it's really important that we discuss that in this document. Um, and I, I kind of wonder if the urban forestry section actually follows the sustainable landscape section and grows a bit. So it's, it's a little less focused on sort of I mean, I, I think that comfort and aesthetics are important, um, but I think that the the um, uh, environmental and carbon sequestration benefits need to be emphasized more here. Okay, Commissioner Beal. Yeah, I wanted to uh, comment on the sheet mulching page. Um, just specifically on the presentation, I like these green circles with people doing an activity together. So I like this, yeah, here it is, this particular sheet, and it, and we could look at this later if, you, if there's time, but some of the other ones kind of have a plain square. 
this has a, this nice green circle that the way it draws your eyes in and you see the people doing an activity together, uh, I think that this is a, a, a great way to, to get people to do an activity together uh, and it's accentuated in this, this presentation. I hadn't didn't know about this sheet mulching, uh, but it looks like this is going to be a great activity to, uh, to promote in the city. Commissioner Chang Frank. Um, could you turn back to the urban forestry? Okay. And so, um, okay. I just, I, I, I really appreciated Commissioner Price's um, comments. It's one of those comments that makes me rethink all of the comments, opportunities to comment and include some of those urban forestry goals in the objectives and goals for the various parks. I do feel like, <sighs> We don't want to go back, but I think that's a really important thing to consider, especially you know if we're talking about Pure Street Park, where there could be so much more you know shade needed, also terrace, and um, and that yes, trees aren't going to be you know big enough for several years, but but you know we're we're here for the long term, so I, I do think there's a way. It, can we be more specific about the urban forestry goals in terms of like, is there a way to just um you know, maybe make reference to a master tree plan that I worry about won't happen for years and years. Um, but just talk about goals for more urban forestry in the parks. Um, even if it's as ambiguous as that, because we don't really, I'm not, I'm not recalling that we have any stated goals of increasing tree canopy in the parks. And I, and I, now that I think about it, you know, the parks are the only area that we have jurisdiction, you know, we can encourage residents to re request a street tree, but the parks is where we have the opportunity and we're not really explicitly stating that goal of additional trees, um, unless I'm wrong, unless I'm missing something. Um, so if you could speak to that, appreciate it. Yeah, I'm trying to um, yeah, digest I a little, sorry. That is something that I also struggled with. Um, just how do you, how do you like prevent being prescriptive, right? I mean, I was trying to find a number or like, is there a, is there increased canopy cover by X or, you know, um, I was hesitating to just explicitly state a goal without having some, some understanding or realization of what, uh, what is, uh, know possible i guess let's let's put it that could way. we um do one of those goals where we say um assess you know a goal could be to assess um current urban canopy shades in the park and and recommend a goal something like that um mm -hmm. because we don't have one right now right and i think the the urban forestry master plan would, would most certainly address that as well so yeah i think there are opportunities to um, include those recommendations here. Thanks. Um, yeah, it has come up. Uh, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just put it in. Um, uh, I'm wondering if there is a way to include that in part. Well, the system wide improvements are focused on um, projects that came out of the um, public engagement, but sorry, I'm just looking for space. Um, earlier in the document to include those. I I believe we did include urban forestry under sustainable landscapes system-wide. So it is, again, trying not to be so prescriptive, but broadening the, the idea of sustainable landscapes. I use the American Society of Landscape Architects definition of what sustainable landscapes are. And right then and there, you have sequester carbon as one of the, the goals of a sustainable landscape. So um maybe maybe it's making that even a little bit more explicit and expand you know expanding the urban forest to you know for improved carbon sequestration you know dot, dot, dot. and urban heat island effect yeah and pollution reduction I'm wondering how would you guys feel if because i'll read it right now i have it up on my screen here is um is in the project catalog page 91 sustainable landscapes this is what it reads it says um this uh it's a, sorry start over it's uh, sustainable landscapes 
install landscapes that are more environmental friendly. This project uh, this, these projects includes site-specific assessment regarding replacement solutions, subs replacement substitutions of landscape, implement popular themes of sustainable landscapes, such as resilient planting, shade, ecological habitat, and or carbon sequestration, refer to SB 1383, compliance for compost mulching applications. So I wonder if in there we just give a little bit more heft to um, heat island effect uh, sustainable landscapes that mitigate also, you know, also mitigate heat island effect um, uh, and in, improve the, the the city's urban forest, urban forestry or something to that effect. That way it's captured actually in the, at least in the system wide as a, as an sorry, idea. Just for clarification, are you on that page right now or are you Oh, no, sorry. I was staying here. I can, let's see if I can. It's uh, I, I have it up if, Brennan, if you I'll want get it. To, yeah. okay. Oh, I got it. <clears throat> so we've only been doing Zooms for two years. I ought to be able to be able to easily transition. Okay, so here's here's specifically what I was talking about. Was this is is adjusting um, adjusting this project, which is referenced again in the in the appendix, but as sustainable landscapes is is put more of an emphasis on urban forestry and heat island effect there. Would, would that would that? Uh, I don't know. Commissioner Armandes had her hand up, but I don't know if you were going to talk about this ish. This okay. So just to respond to that, I think I would personally. I mean, I think it sh it'd be great for it to be there. And I think we would like, I personally, I don't know, so maybe the other commissioner should weigh in, would like something a little more specific. I mean, we, our commission deals with tree, uh, you know, tree removals all the time. And, and also, by the way, uh, urban forestry was named as one of the most number one, like Albany, I, I was involved with the climate plan. So the climate action plan was also, that was a, a very high, highly valued community desire was urban forestry. So given that there's not many opportunities for us to plant trees other than the parks that, that the city has jurisdiction over, I would love to be explicit and in some way, but so yes. And if there's another place to put it, I, I'd love to see that. Commissioner Armendries. Something different. So if there's any more follow up on that, I'd be happy to. That's um, yeah. One other follow up I had, real quick, was uh, just to ask the the uh, the scope of this um, master plan, Isabel, because uh, we have we do talk about street trees and i know for example along marin when that area near san pablo was redone there was an opportunity to choose for the city to choose a whole bunch of trees not not the homeowners i guess i think as, as i recall it and so it seems like there are some opportunities for the city to uh implement you know an urban forest along certain streets uh and so I th um so first of all is that part of the scope of this document and if so, um, I think that should also be reflected in here. Uh, I don't think so. I think the scope of the document is really parts. Um, so, but uh, if, you know, we can, as the commissioners have mentioned, if you want more of an emphasis on urban forestry in parks, uh, that definitely applies. Okay. Um, Air, Commissioner Air, Air Mendries? Yeah, I was just wondering if in the appendix when we're talking about um, volunteers, if it's a if it would be appropriate to name some of the existing um, groups because they play such a big part in maintaining um, the parks. So I'm just wondering if just sort of naming the ones that exist just for institutional um, knowledge and yeah. And what, well, we could do that here. I believe I'll look to David is. We mention all of the ones in the learn chapter as well. Is that correct, David? Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of these, are, yeah. Oh yeah. I said on page, 
31 81 this is right this was more aligned for how continuing to support community volunteers but i, I think another option here is to encourage citizens to to help i mean i think commissioner kent has mentioned that a couple times so this is more guidance of how to continue this to stewardship. Um, I, I think there's also the opportunity to fold in the city policy. Uh, I forget it's called volunteer core or, you know, park day that, uh, um, e you know, each park annually gets, uh, what was it? Uh, clean. Friends of Albany parks. Friends of Albany parks. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> a good point. I think that's also kind of missing here. So I can include that. Okay, Commissioner Kent. I um, just had a thought on the urban forestry. We have that one sheet that ha talks about urban forestry and shade. Maybe just you separate that into two sheets. You have one that just focuses on, on urban forestry and then you, then it's repeated and emphasized. And then another sheet might be shade. Sure. Um, I think that's fine. I think that would be, that's. And then, um, uh, and also maybe mentioning or alluding to um, a um, an urban forestry management plan or something to that effect. Yeah, and seizing opportunities to yeah, um, we've had we've been planting trees here and there, and never really doing a big kind of plan like you just a plan, yeah, management plan or design plan. Well, maybe can a goal be to develop a, a, a urban forestry master plan? Yeah, that would be a really good goal. Probably beyond the scope of this master plan. Um, well, yeah, but a lot of these things are, things are things we're not going to be doing with this master plan, but things that we might get this right. We're just suggesting things in the future to be done. I also think the Memorial Grove idea is a, is a nice one where um, private citizens are dedicating a tree, um, putting it in a park. And, you know, I, I think that's, that's a very nice uh, mm -hmm. idea. Um, and then I had a question about privately owned public spaces. I can't think of a whole lot right now, or maybe I'm just not aware of them, but I do know the the Albany Bowl project as currently proposed would have its own uh, uh, park parklet or park that's um, with place structure and everything that's going to be accessible to the public. Um, so that's going to be the one that's big in where around where I live. But uh, uh, when you see those, uh, can the consultants or anyone else think of any other privately owned public spaces that are are used kind of like parks currently now? Uh, Albany Hill. Parts of Albany, Albany Hill. Yeah. That's true. Parts of Albany Hill. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, you, it's maybe, um, but is, um, is, is uh, UC Village. I mean, that's one big privately owned public space in a sense. Kind of a publicly owned public space. <laughs> it's a yeah, right. Place. Sorry. It's a different jurisdiction, but yeah, that's true. There are spaces there. Um, other final uh, thoughts from commissioners on this part, and then we'll get to uh, public comment. Uh, Commissioner Kent, your hand is up. Oh, sorry. Okay. It's a chronic okay. problem. Let's go to open up to public comment. Um, we have. Uh, this is this would be a time uh, to raise your hand if you have something you'd like to contribute. Okay, so seeing none, um, uh, is that it then? That is all we have. Okay, that's a lot, and. Yeah. Well, there's a lot reflected in there and very visual. I think as Commissioner Beale said, it is going to be very accessible to the public. Um, and we appreciate the feedback you've already received and 
modifications you've made. We look forward to seeing it at the city council meeting, which we don't know which one it is, but it'll be in December or November or December. It has to be, or is there a time frame on that, Isabel? It's probably going to be their first meeting in December. Okay. Yeah. Because I think it, it, uh, it would be too quick of a turnaround to put it on the second meeting in November. I'd have to get all the changes tomorrow. <laughs> so, so I think it will be probably the first meeting. All right, well, we thank the consultants. For all the yeah, I, final word is just I really appreciate all of your time and effort. I know we probably overtaxed you with okay. um, the amount of stuff to review. This was a big, uh, big lift for your city. Um, and uh, which, like I said, I, I'm in Albany almost every day myself. So it's been really a joy um, uh, working with you guys to, um, to craft this. Um, and again, thanks for all of your time. Uh, um, and um, I'm, I'm with you on another parks commission every other month. So I, I, I uniquely understand your position and I really appreciate the time. Well, thank, thank you. Uh, looks like a great product. Um, Okay, well, and we thank the consultants for all their, their hard work on this and uh, the feedback they've incorporated. Um, let me take a look at our agenda and make sure we get on to the next thing. The next item is future agenda items. Commissioners announce requests for future agenda items. Uh, what do we have so far, Commissioner Beal? Uh, we'll have a report or a subcommittee report on the uh, restroom on the Ohlone Greenway. We didn't quite make it this time. Okay. Other requests? I have one for, I think it's Measure M, the Parks Maintenance and Improvement and Expansion Fund. Uh, is that... Um, I think they were supposed to get an update from the Public Works uh, Department twice a year on how uh, the money's being spent oh. and other things they're doing. Um, do you know, Isabel? When we're... Oh, yeah? It was just an earthquake, sorry. Yeah, it was uh, right my house. I heard a little rumble. I didn't feel... Okay. That's the door. Hey, do what you're not supposed to. Run out of the house! <laughs> wow, that was uh, scary. Mm-hmm. I got to check on my family. The dogs are barking in the neighborhood. Wow. Uh, okay. Well, we should wrap it up very soon. But uh, Isabel, do you know when we're due for the next one? Yeah, it's planned for December. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Future agenda items. Well, I know the community, uh, the, the emergency preparedness CERT group was looking for uh coordination with the parks maybe we should uh, increase the bring that on sooner than later um and okay so if there's nothing else let's go to the uh it says that our next meeting is thursday december 9th um and uh and then uh brian did you want to lead us in a moment of silence for uh is it supervisor well, my team. It's kind of ironic. We actually we just had an earthquake just now, but uh, we we'll know how big the place gets. Uh, so I guess I've never led this sort of thing before, but let's just have uh, a moment to go. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, okay. Thank you. All right. Meeting adjourned. Good night. Good night. Good night.